Okay, it's one o'clock. Hello and welcome to the Middle East Forum Speaker Webinar Series. I'm Stacy McKenna and I will be moderating this discussion today. We are pleased to have Mr. Cliff Smith, Director of the Washington Project, and Mr. Sam Westrop, Director of Islamist Watch, join us today to discuss uncovering terror funding in foreign aid, the Islam Islamic Relief Agency scandal. Mr. Smith and Mr. Westrop will speak for roughly five to 10 minutes, then open it up for questions. Should you wish to ask a question, please use the Q&A box located at the bottom of your screen. We will do our best to get to all questions, but we have many participants on this webinar, so I apologize in advance if we do not get to yours today. And with that, I will turn the discussion over to Cliff Smith and Sam Westrop. Hello, all. I'm Cliff Smith, the Washington Project Director of the Middle East Forum, as she said, and we're going to be discussing um, this scandal, and I'll just start out by saying what it is we found. Quite simply, we found that in 2014, the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID, awarded $723,000 to the large evangelical charity World Vision. Um, this is an agency that has um, um, does international aid work all over, and the grant was to improve water, sanitation, hygiene, and to increase food security in Sudan's Blue Nile region. Um, one of, out of these funds, 200,000 was to be directed to a subgrantee known as Islamic Relief Agency, or ISRA. Uh, Sam is the one that basically stumbled onto this. I'll let him tell you a little bit more. So part of the Middle East Forum's work monitoring uh, the activities of radical Islamic or Islamic groups in the US relies on partly checking that the federal government is not giving money to these Islamists, to these extremist groups. And as part of that work, we regularly monitor a very prominent database the government runs called usaspending.gov. You can visit it yourself if you want. Uh, and you know, as part of our other work, we've we found um, at least $40 million worth of, of grants of federal money going to Islamist groups over the last decade. None are quite as extraordinary as, as this in the story we're about to tell you. We came across this going through the government's own database and we assumed it must be a mistake. We found the name of a designated terrorist organization as a recipient of a US government program. So we, we wrote to uh, the US Agency for International Development, USAID, uh, to ask them about it. And sure enough, they came back and said, no, 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 this is a, a mistake. Um, uh, this is another group. It's not related to the Sudanese group uh, uh, that's designated as a terrorist organization. Uh, you're mistaken. Uh, we thought this suspicious. We didn't believe it. Um, so we filed freedom of information requests. We submitted additional press inquiries. I even had someone in Sudan uh, check the address that was listed in the USAID grant and see if it matched that of the terror charity. Just as our Freedom of Information Act was about to uh, uh, yield something, and we were pursuing uh, USAID through the courts, uh, we got a return call uh, 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 from the federal government saying, actually, we made a mistake when we told you before that uh, there was no link. This is indeed a designated terrorist organization that has received government monies. Um, and uh, here's how it happened. Uh, this wasn't enough for us. We filed additional freedom of information requests and, and broadly, this is what we found. Uh, so firstly, what is the Islamic Relief Agency? Um, well, founded in the 1980s in Sudan, uh, it is a very important component of the international Salafi jihadist financial network. At its height, it had over 40 branches around the world, uh, including here in the US. Um, it has always been involved in terror. There's been no doubt about it. Its roots were in the Sudanese Islamist uh, regime in the 80s. It was a key part of, of the Sudanese uh, attempt to Islamize Sudanese society and to ensure that the spread of the regime's ideology, which was closely linked to, it was a mix of Salafism and Muslim Brotherhood ideology. And it used charities like Israel to advance that ideology, not just through government, but through social services, charitable services as well. Uh, and so, uh, uh, as well as this, this social work, it has been keenly involved with terrorist groups for decades, including bin Laden, uh, the precursor to Al-Qaeda, Maktab al-Kidmat, uh, worked very closely with the Islamic Relief Agency to the extent that they even shared officials, went on trips together. Uh, Israel also funded uh, Hamas, uh, it's funded Somali jihadist groups, uh, it even purchased the satellite phones used of the bombings of the US embassies in the late 90s in Kenya. Um, it has long been a key part 
as I mentioned, of the Salafi jihadist network. And it was no surprise that in 2004, the US government designated a terrorist organization. If anything, it was long overdue, including its US arm. Um, now, a number of, since then, the, the Israel has tried to lobby for itself, including in one instance, a US congressman, Cliff, do you want to? Yeah, uh, former Congressman Mark Silgender, who sort of reinvented himself after losing his seat as a freelance international diplomat that thought it was best to find ways to um, bring various Islamists into um, better connection with Christians in a sort of misguided effort to moderate them, ended up lobbying for ISRA's um, uh, getting its designation as a terrorist organization lifted. And it was paid, he was paid using stolen USAID money. Um, and so this is not the first time ISRA has been in the headlines, which made it all the more remarkable. He ended up going to jail uh, for a year for lobbying for unregistered um, without registering for a foreign entity. Um, and what's more, he actually has been close with some of World Vision's people. He's signed some of their statements um, and some of their declarations, so on and so forth. Um, so this should have been seen by World Vision before they did it. Uh, what is World Vision? World Vision is a large international aid charity, um, usually fairly well respected in the Christian community, but unfortunately, um, they have a clear systemic problem with getting too close to Islamist terrorists. Um, this is not the first time they've gotten caught doing something like this. It's the third that we know of. Um, they have got their, uh, they've gotten fun caught before funding the PFLP um, in, the, in Palestine, the Palestinian territories in Israel. They have also funded Hamas. One of their former Gaza director is currently awaiting a trial in Israel for giving millions to Hamas. Um, they've been working in Sudan a long time. And um, on top of that, there have been many chapters worldwide in Europe, in the UK, in Australia, and many other ones in across Africa, Asia. So sometimes that makes transparency very difficult. Um, in this case, the trouble really started when Sudan was partitioned into North and South Sudan. As you may know, the predominantly Christian South um, had been fighting with the North for well over a decade and had resulted in what was often described as a genocide. Finally, there was a partition, but there were certain areas of what is now North Sudan um, that were sort of more closely dividing Christians and Muslims. And in those areas, um, the uh, Sudanese government required that the Western charities use um, what they called local partners. World Vision ended up having that local partner be the Islamic Relief Agency. Almost certainly that was at Omar al-Bashir's request. Omar al-Bashir attended ISRA's board meetings personally. So it was very likely that is why they did that. Um, various documents um, in the WeFOIA set, World Vision claims that their relationship started with ISRA in 2013. However, um, we found one document online for their European branch that suggested it may have started as early as 2011. Um, World Vision's contract explicitly said that it is their job to vet any subcontractors, not USAID's job. Um, yet they have tried to push this off onto USAID as being their fault for not telling them. Um, after they finally got called out for doing this by a third party, the International Organization on Migration, um, pointing out they didn't want to work with um, World Vision in this area because they were partnered with ISRA, they asked um, USAID for clarification. Um, they admitted eventually to knowing, seeing that Islamic Relief Agency was listed on the designated list. They even admitted to seeing that there was a thing that said all agencies, all offices worldwide are designated as terrorists. They just claimed that since it didn't say that one of those offices was in Sudan, they said it was a different group. You can buy that or not. Um, it can be, a, it was a major political issue. Um, various members of the Obama administration and Congressman Adam Smith, whose district um, World Vision's headquarters is in, was lobbying um, for World Vision in this case, because after they got caught, they claimed it was so important to continue funding this organization to their, organi to their efforts in Sudan that they applied for a special license to fund them, even though um, they were designated. During the same time, Samantha Powers, the UN ambassador, her deputy ambassador, Jeremy Weinstein, um, was working with Treasury to get Islamic Relief Agency delisted as a terrorist organization, using no new information, um, 
or even having Islamic Relief Agency ask for a evaluation as should have been the case under the law. Nonetheless, they sought a review. Um, ultimately, that was not granted. However, they did grant World Vision uh, a license to pay Islamic Relief Agency $115,000 in spite of knowing the fact that they were a terrorist organization. Um, at that point, World Vision claims to have stopped working with Islamic Relief Agency. However, a online European job posting months later listed working with ISRA multiple times throughout the job description. So there's some questions there. Um, moreover, the sad truth is World Vision's response to this has mostly been obfuscation. It has mostly been trying to hunt responsibility to somewhere else rather than take a systemic look at their practices, in spite of the fact that this is the third time. World Vision does some good work, but until they address the systemic problem of not being able to recognize bad guys from good guys, they really need to be held accountable by their donors. That's right. And World Vision's work with Israel is not just funded at this point as we found out by the US government, but by the United Nations, by Irish aid, um, all across the world, it seems. Um, and not just through World Vision, but certainly the Islamic Relief Agency has benefited from the largesse of Western taxpayers, either through these proxies like uh, World Vision or even through, we think, possibly direct grants in the past. So this is enormously alarming and um, things are changing in Sudan. And so therefore is ISRA. Um, as the Bashir regime has been dismantled, so has his support network. Um, and to it looks like uh, Israel, the Islamic Relief Agency, is now partially shut down. Its website is, is delisted. Uh, its social media sits silent. Um, it's possible that the charity has been completely expunged by the new Sudanese government. But let us not think that there are many charities like the Islamic Relief Agency also willing to exploit Western charities to take Western government funds uh, and to exploit the, the goodwill of, of, of donors all around the world. Um, the original clue to this, this whole, whole issue was just sitting on a public database that anyone could have seen. We came across it by accident and we followed it up. Um, but it makes us wonder what else is out there sitting on a government database just waiting to be discovered as it relates to radical Islam, the spread of jihadism, terror finance around the world. So we encourage you to, to see what your local government is doing, see what your state government is doing, see whom it's funding. Uh, you too may find an Islamic Relief Agency somewhere in that data. Uh, thank you. Thank you both so much. We have quite a few questions coming in. So the first one, how and why did this allocation happen? And is it still going on in the Trump administration? Uh, to the best of our knowledge, there has been no um, funding for Islamic Relief Agency in the Trump administration, nor have we found any examples of actual designated terrorists that I'm aware of that have been funded by the Trump administration. However, and this is a big however, there have been numerous um, Islamist groups with pretty clear links to terror that have not only continued to get money into the Trump administration, but if anything, based on what we know, it may have accelerated. Sam can tell you a lot more about that. Yeah, I'll give you a number very briefly. We've discovered at least $40 million of federal monies going to Islamist groups over the last, uh, uh, since about around 2010. Um, under the uh, Trump administration, that number has increased quite dramatically partly because of enormous payouts to Islamist charities tied to South Asian Islamist groups called um, uh, Jamaati Islami, but also to groups that are closely involved with Hamas, groups like Islamic Relief, not related to the Islamic Relief Agency, um, uh, but a, a separate Western charity active in the US and, and Europe and, and tied closely to Hamas in Gaza. Uh, so things have not got better under the Trump administration, uh, which I think has been a surprise to many. Thank you. So why do uh, tax dollars go to NGOs? What does our government expect to gain via policy alliance? Well, um, uh, I think for the most part, government has always deputized uh, large and small groups, do a lot of work, whether social or charitable. Uh, there are good reasons for using charities to do, to, to, to do government work. If, if 
if one accepts that international development should be a key part of the government's function. Certainly groups like uh, World Vision may have contacts and infrastructure in places that the, the federal government simply does not. Um, this is not our, our, our focus and our advice, I think, and Cliff maybe uh, can, can expand on this or, or clarify, but our advice is really only that if you accept that the government should be funding groups overseas to do charitable work, the accountability, the, the transparency and the checks to make sure that no radical or violently inclined group ever receives a single cent of American taxpayer dollars must be so strong that they can never possibly be broken. And at the moment, the system has failed terribly. Uh, the Islamic Relief Agency and World Vision is just one example of radical groups taking taxpayers' money uh, the system needs to change. And the sad truth of it is, is a lot of NGOs are actually going in the exact opposite direction. A lot of NGOs are actually pushing for lighter restrictions, basically saying, well, you know, we might accidentally get caught up funding terror and we're trying to help people, so you need to lighten the restrictions a little bit, um, which I think is the exact opposite of the truth. It's absolutely true that I think international aid is at times very valuable and worthwhile. Uh, however, um, if you are funding um, totalitarians, which make no mistake, Islamists of the sort are exactly that, you're creating the problem that you're then trying to solve in the long run. And there needs to be much stronger um, restrictions. In, in my view, um, a simple formula would be simply right now, anybody that anybody can give money to anybody as long as they're not a black hat, as long as they're not a designated terrorist organization, even though in this case, even that happened. It should be the other way around. You, you should have to, if you're a foreign company that's going to be getting US taxpayer dollars, you should have to get a white hat preemptively, in my opinion, to show that you are a good organization, a safe organization before you're able to receive federal government funds. That would be my simple version of it anyway. Thank you. Um, is this an example of incompetence or malice on the part of the US government or, or on the part of U.S. government oversight, um, is World Vision anti-Semitic in any way? Um, World Vision has had at minimum anti-Israel and uh, certainly arguably anti-Semitic um, leadership for decades. That is absolutely true, which is very unusual for um, evangelical charities. Generally, evangelical charities tend to be very pro-Israel, sometimes more pro-Israel than other people you might expect, Jewish groups and such. World Vision is not like that. It has had um, very um, Israel skeptical leadership for quite some time, and that certainly, um, I think, has played into their naivety at best. Um, as far as malice, it's very difficult to tell um, for sure what World Vision knew and when it knew it. Um, I think it is um, at minimum incompetence, at minimum um, not doing their due diligence, um, possibly worse. Um, I can't tell you with great certainty. As far as the government goes, it's a little bit more complicated. Um, World, um, USAID did not cat, catch um, World Vision's mistake. It would have been nice if they had, but it wasn't their job. It was World Vision's mistake to make. Um, afterwards, after they knew about it, um, I totally disagreed with their decision to grant World Vision the time, the, the ability to pay them for the one-time fee. I understand why they did. It was a very difficult situation. They had Americans on the ground that theoretically could have been put in jail by the Sudanese government. Um, they could have jeopardized all foreign aid in Sudan, which they thought was in their best interest. It's a much touchy, it's a closer call to me. Um, that said, I thought the fact that we learned fairly recently through documents we just got a few months ago that the UN ambassador and her deputy were openly lobbying um, Treasury, which was complying with trying to look into lifting ISRA's terror definition um, designation without any request from ISRA, I thought that was bad faith and a very bad action by our government. So it's kind of a mix of things depending on who you're talking about. Thank you. So has USAID or Israel, ISRA been problematic in general regarding Israel or is this just a specific example? Well, I mean, Israel, let's, let's be clear, is, uh, uh, was part of a, a Salafi jihadist network. So as it relates to Israel, Israel, Israel is, is not, a, not a friendly group. It is part of a, a theocratic movement that wants to see Israel destroyed. Um, as it relates to World Vision and to USAID, uh, Cliff? I mean, um, it, USAID, I don't think, has any kind of 
you know, overt political agenda. I'm sure the bureaucrats have bias like any other group. I mean, bureaucrats tend to be more left-leaning and um, the modern American left tends to be, you know, more skeptical of Israel, for example. Um, world vision again, or we've discussed their history. Um, I don't think this is, you know, some kind of grand conspiracy on any of either of their parts, at least in regards to Israel as a whole. Um, but I do think there is probably, you know, ideological blinders that make the, you know, detecting these kinds of issues more difficult and uh, for them and that they don't really see the problems in some cases. Thank you. All right. So we have quickly run over our time, but last question. Has there been any effort to file a complaint against World Vision with the IRS to remove their tax exempt status? I'm not familiar with anything like that. Um, I can tell you um, that there are actors in Congress that have looked at this and are continuing to look at this. Um, I can't say more than that. Um, I have to keep the, but I can say that I have talked to leaders in Congress that are concerned and have even publicly stated that they are interested in looking into this problem and have begun to look at this problem. Um, you know, this is a small thing um, in the grand scheme of things. We're talking about you know, a few hundred thousand, maybe when you count some UN funds, we're not quite sure how much went, maybe a few million. I mean, it's a problem, but it's emblematic of a much bigger problem, is what we really need is a clamp down on funds that are going to groups that ha are ideologically extremists. Um, this is sort of an especially egregious example that highlights that. And I hope that in the long run, this small issue becomes a much bigger issue insofar as it highlights the need for that kind of reform. Thank you. This was very informative. We have a few questions asking, uh, where can we find writings on this? So everything Cliff and I have written on this subject can be found at the Middle East Forum uh, in the Islamist Watch uh, project. Um, go to meforum.org, search Islamic Relief Agency in the search bar. Most of it should, should come up. There's also a considerable number of other uh, uh, media has written about the, our findings, has written about our investigation, has written about peripheral topics relating to this. So Google away, a lot will come up. Um, and just once more a reminder, we found this, we found this story sitting in a public database. Uh, we need you, the public, to also alert us to these kind of, these kind of findings, because that they're absolutely happening in your area with your congressman, with your local state government. Uh, so if you do find something, get in touch. Um, and certainly feel free to email me, westrop at meforum.org. Thank absolutely. you. All right. Thank you so much, both of you, for taking time out of your busy schedules to talk about this important topic. We have come to the close of our webinar. Thank you again for joining us today. There will be a short survey to fill out at the end to help us better serve you going forward. Be on the lookout for our weekly webinar offering for next week, which will be sent out shortly. On Monday, we have Mr. Benjamin Baird discussing Islamist neighborhood watch groups are coming to a city near you. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again in our next webinar.